Hey guys, welcome back to the Prominence 2 RPG series. Last time we made a big drill contraption to dig out the nether. We're gonna go check that out. In this episode, we have lots of things to do. And we're gonna put a mine shaft back there on that mountain, I think, using the water for some power. Of course, we're going to do that with create contraptions right over there. But before we do that, let's go check out what we did in the nether. I've got a portal down there now called Nether Hub. And this, you might recognize, that's the tunnel we made. Or maybe it was that one. Can't remember exactly, but yeah, we kind of decorated this. We've got ancient debris kind of all over the place. I haven't even bothered mining it. And if you recall, we need to find a couple eyes from the end remastered. We've got three of them. Nether Eye, a Wither Eye, and a... Corrupted Eye. We need to explore some places. And I don't know. I think maybe the Lost Eye is in a Bastion. And a, an Old Eye is in a Desert Temple. So down there to the south, I think I found a Bastion. About 500 blocks that way. And to the north, according to the... We're going to see ancient debris everywhere. I just have not been mining it. And we're just running through things like this. Must be a stronghold. And up here is a mine shaft. And up around negative five, here we go, 530 something. And we need to go to neg X negative 50 or so. And I started digging it. This is convenient. Right about here is where we need a portal. If my calculations are correct, we should drop in on a desert temple. We seem to have spawned in underground in a desert mine shaft. Okay, well, I brought some ladders. Let's just ladder our way out. Will that work? I want to see if there's a temple up here, not get distracted by this mine shaft. It's kind of too late. I already did. There it is. Is that the temple? Yes, it is. Look at this. I got mining fatigue in the vicinity of this temple, so we can't so we can't dig to defeat this. It's buried in the ground. Maybe we can get in up at the top. Seems so. Looks like we've got we've got some puzzles around here. And this is where things went bad. I think these puzzles are broken. When you step on the pressure plate. The redstone lamps are supposed to light up and scroll and you have to time a shot of the target, but the lamps just don't work. The lectern and book puzzle I did solve successfully. And once you do that, see how this altar starts to smoke? And finally, I tried this pressure plate map puzzle for a very long time. And I decided I must need to follow the pressure plates in the same pattern as the lamps on the wall like a map, but nothing was happening. Anyway, we worked way too hard to get here to walk away without the eye. So I grinded through all the mining fatigue to dig my way down to the treasure and found the old eye. Two, actually. Honestly, the design of the temple with the mining fatigue and the husks that seem to spawn just enough to keep you from breaking blocks is evil genius. Honestly, I'm feeling really bad about not finishing those puzzles, but I am convinced that at least one of those puzzles is broken and unsolvable. I don't know, maybe because it spawned inside this mountain here, water broke the redstone. I'm sure there's a ton of redstone underneath those puzzles. Pretty impressive, but at least I saved you some spoilers. I didn't even have any spoilers myself. But anyway, we've got our fifth eye. Let's find our way back and let's go get eye number six out of the bastion. I think the portal's through here. There it is. All right, here we are back at the nether hub. And according to the explorer's compass, there is a bastion about 500 blocks north and about 500 blocks east, which by my calculations and the Pythagorean theorem, that's about 700 blocks away. I upgraded my armor to netherite. It's everywhere down here, thanks to my mining contraption, which I sent on ahead. And it has tunneled out the entire path. Can you imagine? Traveling all this way in the nether without flight, 700 blocks through who knows what. I cannot. So we are taking this tunnel 
all the way to this bastion. And it's so cool. I've never really experienced another like this. You just tunnel and there's structures all over the place. Conveniently tunneled beneath for easy access. But yeah, thanks to the these tunnels and all the netherite, well, ancient debris that I'm finding, and the pulverizer from Industrial Revolution, which we've covered in a previous episode, which doubled it, I was able to fully upgrade all of my armor to netherite. All right, we're headed this way. We're almost there. And there's a boss above me somewhere, the Decaying King. No idea what that is. We may need to check it out. We'll see once we get up there what we're dealing with. We are approaching the location of the Bastion, which is right above this this warped forest mineshaft. Doesn't sound too friendly around here. So now we're basically down almost at bedrock, so we have to dig up. We've got ladders, and we tend to come up underneath lava, so we need to be careful. Lots of lava oceans above us. But working with ladders, kind of, oh, there we go. See, makes that pretty safe. Now, if I had some sort of fire resistance, I could just swim up through that lava. But we're going to need to find a way up. Let's try over here. Right, so far, so good. That scared me. But as long as we stay below the top ladder, we're safe from lava. We made it. All right, where are we here? There's the bastion. Nice. And here's the lava lake that we came up in. Oh, what's this over here? I wonder if that is the that boss we saw. Does he live in there? We might need to go check that out too. All right. Well, let's head into this bastion. Let's see if we can get ourselves another eye. All right. Let's head on in here. I don't ever know the best way to go into a bastion. Maybe I'll just ladder up. Probably going to be in for a fight once we get up here. Ah. Here's a chest. Come on, be an eye. Seems to be stuck. Biglin Beast. He's almost dead. All kinds of chests. There's supposed to be an eye in a bastion. I'm pretty sure. Here's another look at this thing. Well, this is disappointing. I need to check my sources on where the eyes are, but I'm pretty sure they were in a bastion. The mod page says that there's an eye, there is an eye in um, Bastion's treasure chest. I don't know if that's specifically in a certain kind of Bastion, I am not sure. But I feel like I have tapped out this particular Bastion. All right, I've been through a lot of Bastions and this time I finally found a treasure room Bastion we're going to find an eye in this one. All right, here we go. Either one. Oh, the cursed eye. I can't believe it. Apparently, we need to find it in a treasure room bastion. And there's two of them.
I am so done with Bastions. Let's go home. All right, well, finally, guys, we did it. Let's go back to the overworld. I had to go to like five different Bastions before I found, I suspected all along that it was in a treasure Bastion. There's four different kinds of Bastions, I think. One of them is the treasure one. That was the last one I went to. And we found the first eye, which is what you find in a Bastion and an old eye, which seems like forever ago, which we found in the desert temple. All right, I think I said earlier that the old eye was the fifth, but that was a fourth, I guess. And the cursed eye was our fifth. We just need to find seven more. No problem. Oh, and did you think I forgot about this guy? Yeah, we took him on too. Can I tank him? Nope. So this was a pretty long fight. Mostly me jumping in and out from behind this wall. I'm going after him. There we go. What did we get? This Lord Soul. We got the Darken Blade and a Withered Demon Heart. All right, we've made some progress. We've made some progress on the RPG side and exploration side of this pack. Well on our way to getting to the end. We've got five eyes now. And in the process, I took out the decaying king. Check out this sword from this guy. Pretty epic. Okay, for the rest of the episode, I want to make a mine. In order to progress some more, we need resources. I'm out of iron, I'm out of diamonds, I need to make a mine. I haven't even been below the ground here really in this part of the world since we moved here. So let's take our minecart contraption, which is our drill, our tunnel bore. And I wanna make a tunnel right through there. I'm gonna start it out here so we can cut it down to this flat level here. So let's do this, let's put down the cart assembler. It's a rail cart assembler. Put this down right here. Now, if you recall from the last episode, machine right here is going to make a tunnel. I'm going to break these chests, pick them all up. Let's put it all quickly into the storage system. It will be the makings of our mine shaft. I think I'll let this thing go all the way through the mountain and act as a tunnel. Some folks also pointed out in the comments that if you use torches instead of redstone blocks here, this thing will go like twice as fast. And I tested that and it does. And I could have done that for this because it's not super risky, but the problem is if you run into water or lava, that will break the torches and the blocks are immune to lava. So if this thing gets kind of surrounded by water or lava, it will not stop running, but with torches it will. So that's why I left it. We're not in a hurry. All right, now that we've got our tunnel, I terraformed this a little bit. We'll build a entrance to the mine shaft here. Have a nice structure. Let's light this thing up a bit since we're getting a lot of mobs. So from here, what we're going to do is make some mine shafts going down. Of course, we're gonna use create for that. So we'll do the first one right here. I think we'll do like a three by three. We'll do three by three mine shafts down and make it look like this. We'll do a series of these down through this tunnel. We'll just dig down and see what we'll see what we end up with, right? Okay, so we have our platform of drills. We're going to use a gantry shaft to move this thing back and forth down this tunnel. So let's put a gantry shaft. Not sure how high to put it. Let's put it here. And the gantry carriage. Mm, see, that's not high enough. What if we put it here? Because then we need the rope pulley here, but we need the rope pulley to be powered by the gantry. So let's put this thing, let's put the gantry up here. Like that. And then the rope pulley like this. So now the gantry, when it's not moving, it will lower the rope pulley down onto here. And grab right in the middle of this. As it's moving down, it will turn into a contraption 
and move the drills and drill into the ground. All right, we need to power this now. Got some water wheels. We should be able to use this thing right up here. What happens if we stick a couple of water wheels right here? Just like that. Yeah, I don't think we're going to need a bunch of power for this. Just got to get things moving. Vertical gearbox. Some more shafts. All right, next we need a gear shift right here. The lever on it. This will control the direction that the gantry spins. And then we need a clutch right here for the lever on it. This will turn it off entirely. And a lever right here, which will control whether the gantry carriage moves down the gantry or whether it transfers its power to the rope pulley. We have this turned off for when we connect it because we don't want it to spin just yet. Vertical gearbox there and a vertical gearbox here. And a gearbox here. Vertical one just needs to be rotated. There we go. Now, if we hit this lever, the gantry carriage will move. Okay, let's put a couple of bandesite casings down here for some nicer looking blocks. And we need to glue these together. Now the entire rope pulley should move when we power this. Which it does. That's not gonna work because it's going to bump into that. All right, so we need to carve out a track, a channel for that to move down and also raise the shafts one higher. Okay, I've cut a channel over there and raised that shaft up one higher. No big deal. Just reconfigured things a little bit. Now it should move through that channel just fine. So we can move this drill down the gantry the whole way. Let's bring it back. Stop it right above. Perfect. Okay, now we just need to glue this thing together. Now we have this contraption glued together here and that one up there. And now when the rope pulley drops, it's going to connect itself to this contraption and start drilling down. And it will just go all the way down to bedrock where it should. This, we want to power the shaft. So when this is lit, it's now going to transfer the power to the rope pulley. And here we go. It's going the wrong way, maybe. There we go. So this is going to go down and connect itself right here. Now we're drilling. If we speed up the rotation here, it will go much faster. But we'll let this thing go all the way down to bedrock. Before we do that, though, let's, let's bring it back up and just make sure it works. Bringing it up to the top and then dropping it again. Turn off its power. Now we can look in here and see what we got. One of these barrels is going to have the stuff. Here we go. 45 cobble. All right, let's let this thing go down to bedrock and see what happens. All right, we've been here for a few minutes. It's making some progress. It's found a tunnel down there. Getting a little impatient, though. So let's put a rotational speed controller over here and speed this thing up. That right there, which is the rotational speed controller, and a large cog on top of it. Just need to connect this to the large cog now. We changed the rotational direction. Oh, we didn't. So now we can just, with the wrench, speed this thing up. Not sure how much we can go with just the two water wheels. Let's try 96. That works. Okay, that's a lot faster. I'm back when we hit bedrock. All right, about a day later, it seems like we've reached the bottom. It stopped moving. I put some safety features here, decorated a little bit while I was waiting. 
Let's bring it up. Change directions. This is like deep sea fishing. Let's turn it all off and see what we got. Right here. There we go. There's the other stuff. All right. So for the entrance to this mine shaft, we'll do this with mangrove. And we'll start out here with this. All right, I think that's the build. Let's take a look inside. Let's see what we did in here. Move the drill over here. We ran this thing down to bedrock again. Oh, looks like it's flooded. We'll have to deal with that. I've got this linked controller here, which has these simple controls on it, which I've got linked to these toggle latches and redstone links. So basically what's going on here, the 
Redstone that controls the clutch to turn it on and off is this one. You can do these manually. This changes directions and this one activates the drill. So we can flip this one, turn it the other way and it should bring the contraption up. We can also use this linked controller for this and right click on it. The W key turns it on and off and the S key changes direction. W key powers that. There you go. You can't move with it, so you have to be careful. It's the same keys for movement. So I tend to hit those by mistake. But here we go. Our our drill's coming back up. Let's see what we get. Oh, we went right through a geode. I wonder if it's gonna get stuck on those geodes. It did. We're gonna have to go rescue it. Let's go. Break these budding geodes so it doesn't. And let's get rid of the water. And if we hit S all times, we should be able to ride this thing up to the top. Next time we'll set up maybe an elevator contraption that will allow us to go down to the bottom. Then we'll do some strip mining down at bedrock for some diamonds. Nothing terribly exciting here. All right, I think that's going to do it for this one. We got a couple eyes this episode, progressing toward getting to the end. Achieved our goal of building a mine shaft. Pretty cool. All right, if you like the video, please like the video. Subscribe to the channel to keep up with the series. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Until next time, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. I appreciate you.